Welcome back to MDG Media's coverage of the Sierra Vori Challenge, ninth stop on the Euro Tour. We got round two back nine action from the MPO lead card. Moving day here at the beautiful property in Sierra Vori. Andrew Gum and Elias Lukonen. How you doing, Elias? What's up, Andrew? I'm very good. It's nice to be here once again doing some commentary on this beautiful looking course, beautiful on video. I wasn't present for this event, but bringing some stats and more insights from uh, from Andrew. But there, yeah, looking at the top 10, we saw some good play, specifically both from Jona Heidenen and Nestor Tuhkanen, other guys on the card, not quite bringing up the pace on that front and uh, dropping a bit down the leaderboard, but luckily for them, there's some good scoring opportunities also on the back nine. Yeah, and Miro, seven down to the front nine. Hot pace. It's definitely a very beautiful property here. Holiday resort, lakeside, everything you could want and more. Disc golf dreamland, hole 10. Strange par four, 135 meters. Mando there early. And then a uh, flooded out fairway. Um, goes a little bit downhill. Well, actually quite a bit downhill here at the end. And then you got the basket elevated, making it kind of a tricky green. Very unique hole. And um, yeah, I guess it's, you can see it's a, it is quite uh, quite its own type of situation there. Well, I guess a lot of these guys will do the big high shot. That seems to be the pro play. Yeah, pretty safe shot. And, you know, if you have the arm speed, just put it up there. And uh, also... Correct me if I'm wrong, but this allows for some more distance than going down the fairway. Yep. Yeah, you can bite off quite a bit more here and just have sort of a jump putt approach if you're if it ends in a good spot. We do have to shout out uh, Lenny Kempine and hit the chains on this big lefty turnover way up high, chained out for the ace. Crazy. Yeah, that's a that's a crazy drive, and our guys mostly throwing the shot pretty well there. Both Nestor and Jasper in nice position, but Jona surprisingly hitting some branches early, and he's gonna have a very long, tricky approach from there. Yeah, it's not the hole you want to get off the fairway, but then if you're on the fairway, your shoes are totally soaked, so it's a bit of a Bit of an interesting one. That worked out pretty well, actually. Yeah, wow. Incredible shot from that position. That must have been over 100 meters, judging by the angle and the glide of that disc. Yeah, and a weird angle, too. You kind of hit a nice uh, something to slow it down there right at the end. It almost looked like he was going after that one. Does end up skipping go a little bit long. Yeah, you can kind of see that down slope there. Even just a few centimeters or maybe 10 centimeters off the ground at the end, but still able to glide down that hill. And Jasper there, wow, that's exactly what you talked about, having just a jump putt approach. Yeah, making the hole seem easy there. Oh. Unfortunate kind of bit of a spit through maybe. I guess it was a little bit low. Maybe the it popped off the nubs, but solid stroke there. Getting it within one from Yona now. Yeah, pretty, can't really say wild, but surprising turn of events as Jona was leading by four strokes after hole seven. So losing three strokes on the last three holes 
he needs to get his game together. It's definitely a course that you want to get those birdies on. Yeah, you got to keep it rolling if you're playing for the win. Keep the birdie train chugging along. He slowed down a little bit, but we know he can heat up quick. Hole 11 is a par 3. Just 75 meters, but playing a lot more, like 95-ish, way uphill. And a, another really tight turn at the very end, kind of a tricky line here. A lot of stuff in the way, and a really steep sloping slab of granite rock constructs the green there. On the right side of the basket, it drops off pretty steep, and it's pretty slippery there. Ooh, that's... Yeah, that's not looking good. How how dark is it down there? Does he have a chance for the par still? Oh, it's bad news there. That, that can be all kinds of trouble. Hopefully he can find some kind of a window to get close to the basket, but it's it'll, par will be a, a big win from there. You want to look at high? Yeah, pretty interesting line. Go up and over everything and just drop it. Wow. Crazy oh, shot. Wow. I think the most surprising part about that is not that he's going over, but rather the fact that he's throwing a mid-range there and not something fast and overstable. That, was, that came down nice and soft right, right by the basket. That was a really good line, yeah. Going with kind of like a big sort of stall-out shot that came down with that overstable mid i think well played yeah. and i think tim looks like he showed the traditional play there just the forehand he's gonna have a nice look from in the circle and mystery able to almost throw it in from there all the way down the hill what an incredible scramble shot that was yeah Nestor seems thirsty for these big throw-ins and everything exciting player That was kind of uncommitted putt there. Pretty low, right? Oh, surprise. Air ball missed there from Yona. Left side. He's got some work left to do here. This is a scary putt too because there's a steep drop off right behind the basket now if he... Oh, uh -oh. whoa. I did not see that coming. Yeah, neither did I. Missing on both sides of the basket. Both ones kind of just looking like he extended his arm towards the wrong direction and that's not in as well. Jona is going to be taking a double bogey at best here. After, after being up in the circle for a birdie look, misses two inside circle putts and a C2 putt. I think he's pretty close now, but... What a meltdown here on the green from Yona. This is going to change things at the top big time. And what a shift of momentum after Nestori being in a terrible position off the tee. And now he's going to be getting two strokes and he's going to be leading the event. Wow. Double bogey. Four putt. Sorry, I'm a bit speechless. I haven't seen that from Yona before. Those inside circle putts usually just stick in the heart. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, even the miss on the last hole was a little bit surprising. But that wasn't much of. But all of those putts, they were not really even close to going in the baskets. That's a good point. Yeah, something's just gone a little bit off with his... Uh, mechanics or, or focus at least moving on to hole 12 par 3 140 meters downhill with an early gap OB lining the fairway pretty much everywhere and it moves hard from right to left there you see the green also OB tightening up and, and behind it just outside the circle Pretty hard to get all the way up to the basket on this one. You need just the right touch on a perfect disc choice. Something not too overstable so it can kind of like glide a little bit and keep carrying 
as it goes left. That's a nice shot, though. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Is he inside the circle yeah, there? there? Yeah, he's in the circle, and he didn't, didn't have to force that either. That was just a nice, smooth stroke. Got the angle perfect. Yeah, and getting it pretty high near those first branches of that initial tree. It looks like Jasper is doing something similar. Although, oh, I think he hit the branches. Just high yeah. Yeah. Hit the branches and bounced OB left. Maybe. Unfortunate. Daimu pushing it straighter. Coming back nicely, though. Circle two. Great drive. Circle two or getting into circle two is pretty manageable in this one with 31% of the field doing that, but only 3% inside the circle on the drive. So just showing off how difficult that angle is to get all the way there. And Yona also going to be in that circle two range. Yona can bounce back here that not able to hit it from deep. This would be a great birdie. And not able to draw chains. A bit of a null in the potting of the group right now. You know, it's kind of difficult to turn that energy around. And even Nestori, who's been potting very solid. Yeah, surprise. See everybody kind of losing the putts here. There's a good one. Having that. It is a tough hole. Good bogey save there anyway. Not really the putts you want to have for the bogey, but at least getting some confidence from that good make. And then um, we have everybody just a uh, short cleanup for the pars. Pretty common result on this one. 56% getting a par. Yeah, if it, yeah, exactly. Pretty common. Only 9% birdies, and we did have one park job. Severi Savinimi. Must have been a rip. Yeah, that's a crazy park job to get. Like, just to get the distance, but also to get it so far left. It takes a lot of power and accuracy. Yeah. Yeah, super challenging. Hole 13. Par 313 meters. A lot of stuff in the way here. You gotta keep it low with the ceiling. Try to, try to beat all these trees in the middle over a ditch into a well-guarded green. Beautiful straight shot here. Got to kind of really just throw something hard and low to get it to skip up there. That's a nice release from Nestori, but just too wide to the right. You can see he really got that weight on the front leg, able to keep the disc from going too high up in the air. This one's fading out a bit, but he might have an open look there. Looks like he got past the early stuff and checked up short of the deeper stuff so he might be pin high circle's edge this looks good nice line there doesn't get much skip yeah straight as an arrow didn't get a ton of ground play but I think he's still going to have a chance for it and Yona really needs to get something going here this back nine is not going his way yeah, it's definitely a good time to start, especially since Nestor here, 
who got that lead from you on a couple of holes ago. He's going to be taking a par here. And uh, Jonah has a chance to tie that lead back up. This is such a difficult putt after missing those earlier ones and unfortunate. That's another inside circle miss. Yeah, he's out of swords now. It's a good birdie there. Not the most commonly birdied hole. Only 14% of the entire field getting that birdie on this one. And uh, staggering 67% getting par. So just showing off how difficult those trees on the halfway point of the fairway are. You know, not many drives ins inside the circle here. The J, it's kind of like a companion disc to the rock, not quite as overstable. So it's more point and shoot than the rock is, but it's still got really good torque resistance and, and it plays really well in the wind and you can throw it sidearm. Hole 14, really fun par five, downhill towards the beach, 290 meters. Big wide open fairway, although it is lined with OB, but plenty of space to get yourself way up there without too much danger. Eagle definitely in play on this one for the big arms. Yeah, you see it kind of narrows down a little bit right about this point. And here you see this really beautiful green, perfect little swimming beach and a sauna right there on the right. Fun hole to play and it just looks amazing. I mean. Yeah, sets up for some really big shots. Although, Demo here, not going for really any distance at all. Just grabbing that overstable driver and trying to put it to the fairway. Seems like he's not interested of that eagle at all. But Nestor, on the other hand, very interested. Yeah, going big time here. If it can stay off these branches and get back, it sure does. That's massive. Yeah, it's a pretty easy birdie if you, you know, if you just kind of throw a few control shots in a row. Especially with these guys' power, but Yona's going to try to push it up a little further as well. That'll do just fine. Yeah, nice shot there. Possibly even going to set up for a mid-range approach. Actually asked Nestor about this hole and he said that after a good drive, he can personally just go for a hard thrown mid-range. So that 290 playing a little bit shorter. Yep. Yeah, I was uh, caddying for Maxime, the man behind MDG Media, for this round, and he was able to get it inside the circle with the archer on his second shot, so putter. Pretty impressive. Nice play there from Temu. Not really risking anything, knowing that he's fine with that easy birdie and just going to be a short, potentially a short forehand or a backhand whichever way he likes it from there. Oh, nice one here. Getting that late turn. Skip it and slide up a little bit. Easy pitch up from there. And give it a half run if he wants. This is a little bit heavy on the hyzer, but wow, what an incredible tree kick there. That was definitely going towards the OB left, but now 
rather than a par after OB penalty, Jonas have a gonna have a good chance to still get a birdie. Not for Nestor though, as he has thrown it OB, and that's gonna be a disappointing, most likely a par. Just overshoots it a little bit, but not too much left. Six meters or so coming back. Nice upshot there. Hits the koozie. Yep. And uh, this is for Eagle. Jasper, although not really interested of that Eagle, but showing just how reachable this hole is. Not throwing the longest drive, and also throwing a bit of a low burner of an approach and still able to jump out this approach. And Nestor, you're gonna have just an easy par there. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a soft par five, but it's a fun hole, it's beautiful, and it's, it's cool that uh, that eagle is up for grabs. Good pot there, and uh, talking but, about that eagle, there was actually four eagles here. Shout out Severi Saviniemi, Pyry Joutsen, Neil Hongisto, and Heikki Kaitala. Okay. Never heard of Heikki before, but the other guys, definitely big power throwers. Do you know Heike? Uh, I don't. I don't personally. Yeah, new name, but uh, yeah, great eagle. Nice birdies from the three guys on our card. And Nestor, disappointingly, after the best drive, having to settle for that par. Yeah, and a pretty slow back nine for the whole card at this point. They're really going to want to turn things around here. The Back nine's even more scorable than the front, in my opinion, so kind of surprised to see everybody kind of uh, slowing down, but this is one you certainly want to get. Hole 15, par 3, 80 meters, early gap, and then uh, kind of a skippy green and um, fairway as well. It's just a, a big chunk of granite rock slab, makes up most of the fairway and green. See some people in a boat there. Watching some action. Great way to join the gallery. This looks a little bit left. But luckily there's some sticky sticky plants at the bottom. He's still gonna have an outside the circle putt though. Which is not ideal on this hole. It's the second easiest hole in the course, averaging point three one strokes below par. So definitely one you pretty much have to get if you don't want to lose strokes. Yeah, and what you can't see on camera here is this actually slopes pretty heavily from left to right. I didn't really mention that on the whole preview, but if you're, you can be inside the circle on the left side of the basket and it feels like a much longer putt because it's a bit uphill. Ooh, that almost hit the pole. Slides a little past it, but stays inside C1. Maybe a little left as well there. Yeah, Nestor going to have a tricky putt there. But very makeable. Everybody with very makeable putts here. Yeah, it'd go a long way to boost the feeling on the card if we can get a few big putts here. Not quite. Nestor having to go to a straddle, but luckily he's very comfortable with that. And that's a good one. You can see that it meant a lot for him. Able to push that lead still. Guaranteed at least tied for the lead. Or even solo, depending on the putt from Jona coming up.
Mm. Short miss there. Never had a chance. Important one here. And that's a good putt from Yona. After those bit of, and not even bit of, after the huge putting struggles he had in that middle section, it's good to see him make those inside a circle putts. Yeah, great to get that confidence back. I know it can be hard once you miss a couple of easy ones to get that feeling right. Second easiest hole on the course at 2.69 though, so you, you do definitely want to get it. 44% birdies and just 12% bogeys or worse. Moving on to hole 16, par three, 95 meters. Moving right to left with OB on the left side and behind the basket. Pretty much stock Heiser shot for the righty backhand players at this level. There you see the basket and the, the only mistake really to make is saw it off a little bit early or maybe kind of overshoot it and get too much of a skip to go OB on the back side of the green there. Everybody, everybody on the card, I guess, knows on this one that they have to get the birdie if they don't want to lose strokes. Because it's only only fair to assume that everybody else is going to get the birdie. So I guess that kind of creates a different type of pressure here. Knowing that you have to get the birdie in order to stay competitive. And looks like Jonas is going to do that. Yeah, definitely a must get for these guys. Especially on the lead card. That one skips up right outside the bullseye. Interesting to see the different disc choices of the players there. Nestor going with something way more overstable than Jona. And also Temu here going for that wider, more overstable route. Actually kind of leaving himself a putt, although nothing he can't handle still well in the circle there. Jasper. Taking his time here. And it looks like a great shot. There it is, five meters from the basket. So yeah, 52. Hoping for a star frame. Oh, Tamu chains out left side though. Yeah, 52% of the field getting the birdie, so losing a stroke to most of the field if you can't connect. Such a nice looking location here. You know, having these nice grassy fairways. And that lake is just so well located next to the course. Yeah, stunning views all around, beautiful property, incredibly peaceful. Perfect place for a disc golf course. Pretty much tap in birdies there. And Tamu with the frustrating par. Yeah, frustrating hole for him, but also a frustrating round. You know, only being three under at this point. While it's not terrible, it's so far off from what all of these guys are looking to shoot. For sure, hole 17, beautiful view. Part 335 meters, going over this OB pond, onto the beach. Gotta beat a few birch trees on the way. Try to avoid that half pipe uh, skate park ramp. And just get it right up here. You got a little bit of OB behind to worry about and on the left side, but. 
Beautiful disc golf hole right there. You wanna gonna be going with that T bird. Going for that nice straight to slightly fading fairway driver shot along the right gap. And that's a nice looking line there. Just needs to get the finish left. That'll do. Right inside the circle. One thing I really like about that shot is the angle control. Because Jona never turned it over to the right. He only kept the, either the hyzer or the flat angle. Kind of similar thing here for Nestore, creating that consistent flight, never really allowing for any right movement. And you can see they're both of them well within putting distance and a good chances for the birdie. Look in line here, but drifting a little bit left. Checks up just in time, though. Yeah, this hole averaging right around par. 19% birdies and 19% bogeys are worse, so pretty good balance there. And Tamo here also going for that slight flip up hyzer. Not quite getting the flip up. That's gonna be a longer putt, although definitely a putt you can run even with that water being behind the basket as that sand is not gonna let the discs skip at all. Oh no, he knew that out of the hand. It wasn't wasn't right. Or too far right actually in this case, but not the right feeling. Similar distance here for Jasper. It's the front cage. Yeah, not quite. I wonder if it's more difficult to putt on this green, since you don't have that many aiming points. You know, it's just all open air, a lot of space behind the basket from pretty much any direction. Yeah, for sure. No real frame of reference there. And then it can be a little breezy coming off the lake too. One of the more exposed greens. Perfect putt there from Nestori. Turkey. Finishing strong here. Going stroke for stroke with Yona for the last holes. And uh, looking to do that on this one as well. Or, well, the last couple of holes. Yeah, Yona gets four in a row. Back on track after some struggles there, mid-round. That's what he needed to keep himself on the lead card. Him and Nestor currently tied, but I'm guessing there's somebody out there shredding. Hasn't been too hot of a pace from this lead card, so... It'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out here on moving day. We did have one park job from Otto Mackinen there. Must be a great feeling. Stick it close there on the beach. Moving on to another pretty hole, 18, par 3, 120 meters. Same OB pond here, this time on your left. And OB also lining the right side and just behind the basket too, which comes into play quite a bit more than you might think, as we saw on the feature card round one coverage. A couple of the drives slid long. See if they can. Jonah was able to save his par and stay bogey free to finish it off yesterday. See if he can get that birdie today. Move to 20 under par. It's looking pretty good. Really good. Nice shot. This time going for that inside route. Surprising as himself and everybody else on our card yesterday was going for outside of those last trees on the right. And looks like that's what Nestor is doing. Pushing that right side OB though, but 
A dusty stay Thanks. safe. Spotter's hustling over there and giving him the green. Good news. But yeah, uh, Jonah's shot was really interesting. I hadn't thought you could go on the inside line and get that close to the bullseye. I was thinking that's more for like a circle's edge play, but he got it just right. Yeah, seems like a nice play if you don't want to challenge that alongside OB. And Jasper, they're not quite deciding between the two lines and pays the price. He's going to have a difficult putt with a lot of obstruction still. Tamus looks a little early. Kicks a tree and in the drink. Worst case scenario there. Not the way you want to finish your round, especially for Temu. You know, the scores at the lead are tight, but way tighter towards that 15 to 10 under range. So he's going to be dropping possibly even multiple positions only with that one bogey. Yeah, it's definitely tight there. Not the moves you want to make. That one comes up short. This part is going to be super important for Nestor. Needs this to tie the lead for the final round. And look at that. Wow. Perfect stroke. Heating up there right when it counts at the end. Four in a row to finish and 20 under. It's going to be tied with Yona. Tamo in for the bogey. Disappointing round for him, but super high quality player. I'm sure he'll bounce back tomorrow. There you see Yona moving to nine down for the round and 20 under total. Five consecutive birdies to finish. That's exactly what he needed to get things back on track. After some really out of character struggles there in the middle on the green, particularly. Yeah, just super impressive stuff from Jona and Nestor, honestly, but specifically Jona, as I think he lost at least five strokes due to those inside the circle misses. Still able to shoot a hot nine under round. So of course there, Nestor and Jona tied for the lead. And Oni Rusunen, a player who is on an incredible hot streak, he has won the Finnish Junior Nationals and the European Junior Championships on back-to-back -back weekends and now trying to get a third win in a row and Mikael Hame gonna be finalizing our lead card for tomorrow thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Andrew for doing com commentary with me once again oh always a pleasure man definitely been a ton of fun some exciting action and uh, be back for one more exciting conclusion round and head on over to patreon.com backslash mdg media to join the mdg media family on patreon much appreciate that support and big thanks to innova for putting this on <laughs>